It's spring, and for the past few weeks, something fascinating has been happening in my backyard. A spectacular fungus with a very interesting history is erupting out of the garden mulch. It just so happens that I'm a photographer who specialises in photographing fungi, so this means that I'm in my element. This is a shipping container, which I call my Fungarium. In it, I've set up a studio for doing time-lapse of fungi. This fungus is called Aceroe rubra. It's what's called a stinkhorn. The name Aceroe rubra means disgusting red juice in Latin. So the fungi actually grows inside the mulch. So this mycelium spreads through the mulch. Then if conditions are right, it will start to form these little nodules, which then grow into what look like eggs. And they grow and grow, and then eventually at some stage they burst open into a starfish. This is the egg case. It's just cracked open and it's just a thin membrane, like the membrane around a chicken's egg. Some people think they're terrible and get grossed out by them, and other people think they're beautiful. I tend more to the beautiful side. This fungus has a really interesting history because it was the first fungus ever identified and documented in Australia. It was collected by a Frenchman by the name of Jacques Le Billardier, who came out to Australia and Tasmania in 1792, I think it was. The expedition was looking for La Perouse, a lost French explorer. They stopped off in Tasmania, which is the southern tip of Australia, and collected the fungus there in Research Bay. They then tried to head back to France, but unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your viewpoint, <laughs> the French Revolution had happened around about this time. So when they got to Java in Indonesia, all of La Billardier's samples were impounded by the British as spoils of war. Luckily, he knew Sir Joseph Banks, the botanist, who pressured the English government into releasing the samples to La Billardier. So eventually, La Billardier managed to publish the findings in sometime in the early 1800s. So for the last week or so, I've been doing time lapse of these fungi. And with this particular one, I've got two eggs, which I'll try and catch hatching. I've been really surprised to see that this fungi tends to come out in the colder hours of the morning. Often just before dawn or just around dawn, you'll find that they crack open. The other thing I've observed is that the eggs grow really quite slowly over quite a long period of time, maybe weeks, maybe even a month or more. But then when they hatch, it's really quick. It's just spectacular. 